Hi, I'm Jared and I have a confession. I sold all of my stocks. But we'll talk more about that in just a minute. How do you know when to sell your stocks? Do you go off of gut feeling? Do you sell when they're up to take some profits off the table? Or do you sell when they're down to cut your losses because that sucker is never coming back? The answer to that is a lot simpler as well as a lot more complicated than you think and I'll show you what I mean. This is an age old question. If we asked a thousand different people, we'd probably get a thousand different combinations of answers. But let's see what the experts suggest, then I'll tell you why I didn't follow any of the rules that these guys laid out. If we asked an investing legend like Warren Buffett, we'd get these two answers. You would sell when a better, more attractive opportunity came along. He said, we would sell if we needed money for something else. I would reluctantly sell something terribly cheap to buy something even cheaper. Keep in mind that he said if we needed money for something else, which implies that he'd only do this if he didn't have the extra cash on hand to purchase that cheaper investment. The second reason would be if the underlying fundamentals changed within a business or if something within the business landscape had changed. He said, that doesn't mean that we think the company is going into some disastrous periods or anything like that. We think McDonald's has a fine future. We think Disney has a fine future and there are others, but we don't think their competitive advantage is as strong as we thought it was when we initially made the decision. So how is my old man voice there? Because I've won many awards with that voice over the years. Let me know in the comments where you'd rate that on a scale of one to 10. When you invest into real businesses, things can always change. If you've sunk a ton of money into a stock, then it can be even more difficult to sell when it's down because you've already made a huge commitment. This triggers an emotional bias called the endowment effect. It's when an individual tends to irrationally value something higher because they already own it. Another legendary investor, Howard Marks of Oak Tree Capital, noted in one of his memos when it doesn't make sense to sell. He said there certainly are good reasons for selling, but they have nothing to do with the fear of making mistakes, experiencing regret, and looking bad. Rather, these reasons should be based on the outlook for the investment, not the psyche of the investor and they have to be identified through hard-headed financial analysis, rigor, and discipline. Howard also mentioned in the same memo that most of the portfolio decisions investors make are relative choices. There can't possibly be a hard and fast rule because why, when, how, and many other variables are relative to you and no one else. Although he mentioned that relative considerations should play an enormous part in any decision to sell, if your investment thesis seems less valid than it did previously and or the probability that it will prove accurate has declined, selling some or all of the holdings is probably appropriate. Likewise, if another investment comes along that appears to have more promise, to offer a superior risk-adjusted perspective return, it's reasonable to reduce or eliminate existing holdings to make room for it. I know we hear that a buy and hold strategy is the best way to invest, but that's not always the case according to another investing legend, Jack Bogle. Buy and hold for a stock is one thing. Buy and hold the U.S. stock market is quite a different one. You know, what do we have going for us in the U.S. stock market? Leave aside how hard it is to pick the winners, how few people really ever heard of Amazon, 25 years ago, and uh, to say nothing of Google, uh, maybe a little more than that, maybe 30 years ago. So if you hold the stock market, you will, not to be corny, Bill, but you will grow with America. It's tough to blindly say buy and hold to the guy who bought Roku stock at the top and is now down 78 plus percent, even though nothing has really changed about this innovative company that allows consumers to stream content to their televisions. Now that that price has dropped by so much, it doesn't really look very much like an innovation stock now, does it? Things can change within an individual stock very quickly and you can get burned very easily if you're not paying attention. Think of getting burned investing at some point as just a part of this gambling game that we're all playing by investing in the stock market. Look at it like paying for an education that you didn't know you needed. It hurts just enough to force you to become a better investor over the long term. While no one actually enjoys the feeling, it's probably the best way to learn the investing style that works well for you. The longer you invest and different market cycles you go through, the more you'll realize about yourself as an investor, why you invested the way you do over the next 5, 10, 20, and 30 years will probably change. A 22-year-old person watching YouTube videos and YOLOing on spec stocks most likely isn't going to be doing the same thing when he's 37 with a significant other and a couple of kids. Just like smashing beer cans on your head or partaking in mosh pits at metal concerts in your younger years worked back then, those 
actions don't age very well as you get older. I look at investing like a scale that you slide across at different times of your life. At first, you want to play around with all of the toys. Active investing, passive investing, growth, value, dividend, options, commodities, day trading, and the random cryptocurrency that your friend's cousin's sister's boyfriend is shilling to you. As time goes on, you'll start to narrow in on a few different strategies that work well for your specific investor psychology. The most important thing to focus on is having a process that you believe in, follow, and stick to. The people who lose the most money are the ones playing patty cake by veering away from their strategy when their portfolio isn't beating the market in the short term. Okay, back to why I sold all of my individual stocks towards the end of 2020 at the very top of the market and put all of my money into low cost index funds. Before I tell you about that, please hit that thumbs up button to help support my dog Molly. What it comes down to is I'm basically a genius for selling at the top. So you should of course buy my course on how to do that. It's called the toe tapping investor, how to time the market and brag about it on the internet. Just kidding, I don't have a course to sell and I'm definitely not a genius. I was pretty much just lucky. The reason I sold my individual stocks and moved all of that money into low cost index funds is because I asked myself one simple question. Why am I investing this way? That's a dumb question because the default answer most of us have is to make a lot of money maximizing returns. But for me, I'm not really interested in maximizing my returns at all costs. I know that makes me sound like a crazy person who just ate a handful of magic mushrooms, so let me explain. We have this inherent urge to make the most money investing as quickly as possible because that's how you become wealthy. If you're not trying to beat the market, then you're basically just a loser who's going to stay broke for the rest of your life. To do that though, you have to tilt your portfolio in different directions to gain an edge, whether that's picking specific sector funds, actively managed funds, picking individual stocks or whatever. You cannot beat the market and maximize returns without doing more than just investing in super lame, low cost index funds. I don't blame most people for having this mentality either. We look at everyone around us and find the handful of people who are doing way better than us financially and measure our money success to theirs. After investing for years and years, one thing I realized about my investing behavior is that I don't have enough conviction to hold specific stocks or funds that have the potential to outperform the market. Not only do I lack that conviction, but I'm not willing to bet my hard earned money and financial future on the fact that I'm a good enough investor to beat the market. In my opinion, the stock market is basically an insane asylum in the short term where the inmates are running the show. I've accepted the fact that I'm not willing to play that beat the market game in the stock market, which means that I'm perfectly fine with being average when it comes to my investing returns. Choosing which game you want to play will determine how you'll be investing your money. The game I am playing is the game of get rich slow in the stock market. It goes against human nature to intentionally do anything slowly, but I'm a weirdo in multiple areas of my life, so we can just add this one to the long list. To me, the biggest risks are the ones that we can't even imagine happening. Because of that, I need to build a portfolio for myself from the very start that I'm able to hold on to when those really, really weird times come along. As much as we all want to shut our eyes and ignore the downsides, that day is coming. And since I'm still a pretty young guy, there should be at least a handful of unimaginable events between now and when I eventually stop investing. But that portfolio also needs to be able to be held during the good times when I'm sitting there watching everyone else around me outperform my portfolio. I've come to the conclusion that holding dorky index funds is what gives me the ability to hold on during the good times and the bad times. I also enjoy going this route as well because when people are making money hand over fist, that tells me there's a lot of speculation going on. It gives me the ability to sit back and relax while I watch people trade in and out of investments, chasing alpha like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. If this is you, then I am not hating on you, but I for sure don't have the nuts to chase that potential 1-2% to extra return by investing outside of my boring portfolio. Essentialism is the name of the game when it comes to how I've built my investment portfolio, the disciplined pursuit of less. It's also the name of a really good book that I revisit every year as a concept a reminder, I highly recommend it. By taking the one decision to only invest in index funds, I immediately remove a thousand other decisions later down the line. I can skip paying attention to the current stock market news for an extended period of time because none of that applies to a buy and hold index fund investor like me. I never have to decide whether I should or shouldn't buy a stock, sell a stock, buy more of one that I already own, rotate into another sector, asset class, and just about any other decision every other active investor makes. My default is to dollar cost average into the same index funds at the same allocation like clockwork. There isn't a yes, no, 
maybe, or let me think about that conversation going on in my head. The book Essentialism phrases it perfectly. One strategic choice that eliminates a universe of other options and maps out a course for the next five, 10, or even 20 years of your life. If I can reduce the number of decisions that I have to make, then that reduces my chances of making really dumb, irrational moves with my money invested. Less decisions also leads to more time on my hands to do other things. There is too much time involved in properly managing a portfolio full of individual stocks and a bunch of funds. This is very rarely talked about in the investing space and it blows my mind. We are all just playing this big game of what we do with the 24 hours that are allotted to each of us every single day. Spending a couple of hours per week looking over and managing my portfolio isn't guaranteed to increase my investment returns. It's not like a normal skill where if you spend more time on it, you'll most likely improve in that area. Spend that three hours per week on your physical health, there is a 100% chance you're going to improve how you look and feel. Spend that three hours per week on organizing and decluttering your home, there is a 100% chance you'll own less unnecessary items and feel better in your daily environment. Spend that three hours per week on learning learning a new skill that'll increase your income by $10,000 per year, there is a 100% chance you're going to improve in that skill and make more money. My time and most other people's time is way better served doing more productive things that are going to have a bigger impact on our lives. In the book on the shortness of life, Seneca said, people are frugal in guarding their personal property. But as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of the one thing in which it is right to be stingy. The best investment portfolio to use if you want a more passive strategy is the two or three fund portfolio, and you can watch those videos to your left next. Please hit that thumbs up button before you go and check out the description for more helpful resources and free stocks. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.